In this new Ultimate Team series, I make the best team I believe possible picking players from all eras of NBA history. It isn't just about how talented the teams are, but I'm also trying to build teams that would gel and execute well together. Today, we're looking at the Ultimate Jazz team. Before I get started, here are the rules you need to know. To build each franchise's ultimate team, I will be picking a starting five, a second unit representing each position, and then three additional rotation players at any position I choose. In total, there will be 13 roster spots. It's worth mentioning that I will not simply be building these teams based on how talented each player is but I'll also be factoring in how well these players would do together as teammates. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting at the point guard position is the league's all-time leader in both assists and steals, John Stockton. He may not be the most flashy point guard, but what you can't argue against is Stockton's sound decision making, resulting in the Jazz making the playoffs every single season in his NBA career. Of the six highest assists per game seasons in NBA history, John Stockton has five of them. Especially in the 1989-90 season, he was a monster statistically, as he averaged 17 points, 14.5 assists, and nearly three steals, on remarkable efficiency splits. Beyond that, he was an elite defensive player, as he made five all-defense teams and won two steals titles. Starting as shooting guard is the 1970s star, who was way ahead of his time, Pistol Pete Maravich. This guy was a capable perimeter assassin, who scored a large portion of his points from three-point distance before the three-point line even existed. With Stockton and Maravich in the starting lineup, the ball movement on this starting unit will be beautiful, as every open player will be found the instant they've created the space. At Pistol's best in 1977, he averaged a league-leading 31 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists on 43% shooting from the field. Starting a small forward is the fundamentally sound scorer Adrian Dantley. Although Dantley is probably most known for his time in Detroit, without question, the prime of his career was in Utah. He was a mid-range nightmare for opposing defenses, as he was incredibly crafty at getting to his spots. Over a four-year stretch from 1981 to 1984, Dantley averaged north of 30 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists, while hitting an insane 56.4% of his shots, which is incredible efficiency for an elite center, but for a small forward who leads the league in scoring, that's completely unheard of. Starting at power forward is the mailman Carl Malone. For a while, he was the model of scoring consistency at the four spot. Not only was he one of the strongest players of league history, but he also had a smooth mid-range jump shot in his arsenal. The pick and roll between him and Stockton was the bread and butter of the Jazz in the 1990s, and it will continue to be a force on this ultimate team. Malone was also an underrated defensive player, who made four all-defense teams in his career. He wasn't much of a shot blocker, but he was an absolute wall in the low post, refusing to give offensive players quality spots on the floor. Starting at the center position is the 7 foot 4 inch monster, Mark Eaton. Mark is quite possibly the most underappreciated defensive player of all time, as he was a terrorizing rim protector for the ages. In his career, he made five all-defense teams, he won four blocks titles, and was the Defensive Player of the Year twice. His peak was in the 1984-1985 season, where he averaged nearly 10 points, 11 rebounds, and an absolutely stupid 5.6 blocks, which is easily the highest single-season average in NBA history. If the best ability is availability, well then Mark had that too as he only missed a total of 9 regular season games in his first 10 seasons. Now onto the second unit. The backup point guard is the former superstar, Darren Williams. For a while, this guy was legitimately in the conversation for the title of the best point guard in the NBA. He was a dynamic scorer who had elite core vision, and that combination made him a dangerous dual threat that every defense had to respect. In 2010, he averaged roughly 19 points, 10 assists, and 4 rebounds, on 47% shooting from the field. 
The backup shooting guard is the young athlete, Donovan Mitchell. This 6'3 guard will be a massive surge of offense off the bench, as he has a more aggressive tendency to look to score for himself. In 2022, he put up numbers of 26 points per game, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds, on 45% shooting from the field. The backup small forward is the 6'9 weapon, Andre Karolinko. AK-47 was known for his remarkable on-ball defense, and with his fantastic length, he'll continue to frustrate opposing superstars when he subbed in to the contest. He was one of the greatest shot-blocking forwards of all time, as he led the entire league in 2005 with 3.3 per game. He made three all-defense teams in his career, and that quality will be extremely valuable to this all-time team that's mostly made up of offensively-minded perimeter players. The backup power forward is the 6'9 all-star Carlos Boozer. After he turned 30 years old, his decline was sharp and quick, which I think has resulted in many people forgetting just how good he was in his prime. For example, in 2007, he averaged 21 points, about 12 rebounds, and 3 assists, on a stellar 56% shooting from the field. As the substitution for Malone, he'll ensure that defenses will never be able to relax in the low post. The backup center is the 6'11 all-defender Rudy Gobert. Simply put, he's been one of the greatest rim protectors of recent history, as he won the Defensive Player of the Year three times, and even led the league in blocks per game in 2017. He'll have an impact in more ways than that though, as he was also a league-leading rebounder in 2022, and will make a fantastic lob recipient for all of the great facilitators on the squad. Now onto the three rotation players. The first is the 6'4 shooting guard Jeff Hornacek. During their championship contending years in the 1990s, Hornacek was operating as the reliable third option. You could argue that there's some more talented players who deserve this rotation spot, but personally I'm taking Hornacek for his elite three-point shooting, as he'll spread the floor with his career 40% sniping from that distance. The second rotation spot goes to the 7-foot power forward, Lori Markkanen. With traditional low-post power forwards like Karl Malone and Carlos Boozer, Markkanen will make a nice change of pace, as he has a more modern style that can help space the floor. The 2022-2023 season was his first as an All-Star, and that year he put up averages of roughly 26 points, 9 rebounds on 50% shooting from the field. The third rotation player and the final spot on the roster goes to the 6'7 small forward Gordon Hayward. At his best, Hayward did a little bit of everything for Utah, as he was a solid scorer from just about everywhere on the court. He was an NBA All-Star in 2017, and that season he averaged 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists on 47% shooting and 40% from 3-point range. So here's a final look at the complete roster of this Ultimate Jazz team. When you look at this group as a whole, they're pretty solid throughout, filled with great offensive and defensive players. One area that seemed to be lacking after the first two units was three-point shooting, which is why I picked those last three rotation players to help out in that aspect. Do you think this team would make the Ultimate Playoffs in the West? Let me know your opinion. Also, here's my list of honorable mentions. Should any of these players have made the roster instead? I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.